Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm really happy to teach you and give you tips on how to play Viticulture Essential Edition. What I love in Viticulture is how different it is from any other game I've played. It has a completely different rhythm and the more you play it, the faster it gets. It's also really pretty. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Viticulture, two to six players have just inherited a vineyard in Tuscany and they compete to build their wine business. You score points by planting vines, by harvesting grapes, making wine and selling that wine. You start with only a handful of workers, a basic winery, and you can receive help from seasonal visitors. Your goal is to build up your reputation. As soon as one player reaches 20 points, finish the year and the player with the most points wins the game. Now let's look at the components in more detail while we set up the game. Like many Stonemaier games, it's absolutely beautiful. Not over the top, but just really nice. Start by placing the main game board in the middle of the table. It's divided into four seasons. Spring is here and determines the initiative order. Each player places their rooster here. Summer is here in yellow. In that season, you can make money, you can add buildings to your vineyard, collect and plant vines and manage fields. Place the green vine cards here and the summer visitors here. In the fall, you invite visitors to the vineyard who will come either in summer or winter. Finally, in winter, you harvest fields, you make wine and sell it. That's also when you recruit new workers and get new orders. Place the other cards here and the winter visitors there. Place your cork player marker on the zero. This will track your victory points. Finally, place your bottle marker on the Lira sign here. Then each player takes a vineyard mat matching their color. This is where you place new structures. For now, place all the structures next to your mat. Keep all your workers with them too. This is where you plant your vines. For now, take three fields, one five, one six, and one seven, and place them face up, one on each field. Here's also where you harvest and mature your grapes and where you make and age your wines. You can keep a few of the glass wine tokens next to you. Finally, each player randomly takes one mama and one papa. I prefer when we take two mamas and two papas, and therefore my first action is to choose one mama and one papa. They give you different advantages, so it's good to make them work together. Place all four cards together so you can see how they interact together. Start with your mama. In general, she gives you two workers and some cards. Your papa gives you your grande worker and most of the time some money and one structure. So if I was playing this game, um, I would probably pick Mama Margaret to start off with two vines and the summer visitor as well. And probably Papa Paul because they complement each other really well. You get the trellis here, so you need to build one less structure because you already have it from the get-go. Place your new building on the mat, the workers in the available worker box, and the cards and the money next to your player mat. Now that everything is set up, you're ready for the first round. You draw for first place and you give that player the grape token. Now you're ready to start playing the game. Before I explain how to play spring, let me explain how to take an action and how to assign workers to specific tasks during the year. Take one of your workers and assign it to a task by placing it on an oval space on the main board to complete that task. Each location has three oval action spaces. How many are available depends on how many players play as written here. Only the left action for two players, left and middle action spaces for three to four players, and all three of them for five to six players. Place one of your workers on the action space and gain the benefit. If you're the first one, and if you're playing a three to six player game, use the central oval and gain a bonus two. Here you build a new structure, but you get one lira back. So here you would normally gain two lira, but here you gain one more. Here you can plan two instead of one. You can only place one worker per action space. However, if all the spaces are already taken, you can play your grande worker to take the action. Multiple players can play their grande on the same action. 
Note that you can also use your grander worker like any other worker if you want. Just remember that the available workers you have will only be available once per year. So any worker that you've used in summer will no longer be available in winter and you only have one grander worker per year. It's also worth noting that in a three to six player game, I prefer to play the friendly version where you do not take the central action if you cannot play it. So for instance, you cannot play here if you do not have two fields to harvest. Now let's take a spring where you decide the playing order for the coming year. Starting with a player who has the green grape and proceeding clockwise, each player places their rooster on an unoccupied wake up row. Each row gives the following benefit. The first gives nothing but guarantees you start first. In the second position, you draw a vine card. Third, an order card. Fourth, one lira. Fifth, one visitor card, either summer or winter. Sixth, scores one point. And seventh, gains an extra worker. The position of the rooster determines the order of play for each season. So once all players have placed their rooster, players take turns starting from the one all the way to the seven to assign workers to a specific summer action. Here's where you make most of your money. Collect two liras, plus one more if you are the first. Here's where you build the structures you need to upgrade your vineyard, pay the cost and place the building on your player mat. You have trellis and irrigation, which you might need to plant your more expensive grapes. There's the windmill, which you should get as soon as you can, as it gives one point per year when you plant a vine. The cottage is also a good addition mid-game, as it lets you draw two visitors instead of one during the fall. The yoke is often overlooked, but can be very powerful in mid-game, as it lets you harvest early and allows you to uproot vines one field per year. Uprooted vines are returned to your hand, by the way. The tasting room is great once you have wine in your cellar, in addition to the money you receive when giving a vineyard tour. It will give you one point per year. Then we have the medium and large cellars, which you need to age your wine longer, but also to make blush and sparkling wines. In three or more player games, if you're taking an action, you can choose to take the bonus before or after you take the action. So, for instance, if you're building a structure and you have five lira, you can either build the windmill and collect one lira back, or you can collect the one lira and build a six lira building. Here you can collect more vines. Pick up two vine cards if you're the first. There are nine types of grapes, half red and half white, distributed pretty much equally. As they get higher value, they also have higher requirements. No requirement for these two worth one, but you'll need the trellis and the irrigation before you can plant those of a value of four. Here you can plant one vine or two if you're the first. Some vines have the building symbol on the card here and require that you build a trellis or an irrigation or both before you can plant them. Each field has a maximum capacity of five, six or seven grapes respectively. Place the vine card face up on the field of your choice so make sure you don't go over the capacity of that field. Also make sure you have built the necessary building before you plant. Once you have placed the vine, add a glass token on it. Here you can play one or two summer visitor cards. If you play two, resolve completely one after the other. Finally, here is where you can sell one field. Flip the field card on your player mat and collect its value in Lira. If you are the first to do it this year, also collect one point. If you want to buy back that field, pay the amount and flip the card back up on your player mat. If you are the first to play here and buy back the field, then you gain one victory point as well. This is also where you can sell grapes from your crush pad. The grapes get more expensive the older they are. It's worth one lira here, two here, and three liras for seven, eight, or nine-year-old grapes, as written here. When a player is done with summer actions, slide the rooster to the right. Once all the roosters are in the right column, a new season starts. Fall is where you're going to invite visitors to help your workers. One visitor or two visitors if you have the cottage. They can be two winter visitors or two summer visitors or one of each. Note that visitors for summer tend to help more with summer actions and vice versa. This one and that one help with planting vines. 
but sometimes they help more broadly, like this one who lets you place a worker in a future season, or this one that lets you change the position of your rooster. Also, some visitors give you bonuses but make you lose points, like this one or that one. If you are already at minus five, you cannot go below and therefore cannot use that visitor. Once the players have picked the visitor, the players with the highest rooster will take their first winter action, just like in summer. Here you can train new workers, simply pay the price and place one of the workers from your reserve next to that building. If you don't have workers left in your reserve, you cannot train more. Here you gain one lira. It's the only action space on the board where players can place as many workers as they want. It's also the only action space that can be played either in summer or winter. Here you harvest one or two fields. To harvest, move the glass token from the vine on your field to the corresponding crush pad. Here, if we have a two red and a four white, move the tokens to the two red and the four white on the crush pad. If a field has more than one red or white, add them together. So a three red and a two red would give a five red grape. If the number is already occupied, place the glass token on a lower number. If they are all full, leave the glass token on the field. Here you can make up to two or three wines. For that, slide the glass token from the crush pad to the corresponding numbers and color in the cellar. To age wines more than three years, you need a medium cellar, and to age them more than six years, a large cellar. If you do not have a cellar big enough, place the wine token on the biggest available space, in this case on the three. If the space is already occupied, place it on a lower number. Remember that cellars are also required if you want to make more types of wine other than red and white. If you want to make a blush, you're going to need a medium cellar. And if you want to make sparkling wine, you're going to need a large cellar. Also, before you do a large cellar, you're going to need to build your medium cellar first. As you can see here, to make blush, combine one white and one red into a single wine on a pink icon. So a four white combined with a two red makes a six blush. For a sparkling wine, add one white with two red grapes. So here the two white with the one and five reds would make an eight sparkling wine. Then action space counts the number of wines you make, not the number of grapes you combine to make them. Here you collect new wine orders, one or two if you are the first. The wine order cards show you the type of wine you need, how many points you get for fulfilling it. They can range between two and six and some payment you will receive at the end of every year from one or two. Here you need red or white wine, here you need blush and here you need sparkling wine. Remember that while you need the exact number and type of wine, the wines you can use can be older. They don't have to be the exact age. Once you have the right wine, you can fulfill the order. Place a worker here or here for one extra point. You cannot take the point if you do not fulfill an order. You can also score residual payments. If you do, move your bottle tracker up one or two steps. And here you play one or two winter visitors. Winter visitors tend to help with winter actions like harvesting your fields, adding to your crush pad, making and aging your wines, getting more or cheaper workers, and even getting more residual income. This one lets you make wine as if you had one more cellar upgrade than you have. This one even lets you retrieve your grander worker to play it again. And that one even lets you play in a previous season without placing a worker. You will see that a lot of them give you a choice of multiple actions. Note the difference of icons between grapes, which are white and red circle, like this, and bottle of wine, which are the great glasses, like this. Once a player has no more workers to play, he takes his rooster back, and that's the end of his turn. Once all the players have taken the rooster back, you proceed with the following end of year steps. Age all your grapes and your wines using the glass token, like this. Put a new glass token on each vine on your fields. Take back all your workers from the board, including those you hired this year, and place them on the workers available box. Collect any residual income as indicated here. Rotate the first player token, the grape, counterclockwise. If no player has gone over 20, then the player with the grape will place their rooster in spring. Now during the year, if a player reaches 20 or more points, then that's the end of the game. 
Well, the end of the game is triggered as soon as a player reaches 20 points, the game really stops at the end of the year, so it is possible for another player to win the game as there's no point limit. The player with the most points wins. You resolve ties first with the most lira. If you're still tied, then the total value of wine in the cellar. And finally, if you are still tied, then the total value of grapes in the crush pad. My tips to win at Viticulture are this game is a race to 20 points. Try to score as often as you can. The following tips will show you how. In the early part of the game, the most powerful spring position is that extra worker. It's well worth starting last. Getting money early is important, so selling a field early will make a big difference. Try to sell the field when you can get that extra point, and if you buy back the field, try to do it when you also get that extra point. Build a windmill early and wait before it's built before planting vines, and plant only one per year. From mid-game onward, the tasting room is a great way to score one point per year. Try to do it as early as possible. Get a few orders early so you can chart your long game. The yoke and the cottage can be very powerful from mid-game on. It's well worth investing in them. So that's how you play Viticulture. There's a lot I enjoy in this game. I love how pretty it is. I also enjoy how as you learn to play it better, it becomes a very quick game because you learn to score points all the time. It's a real race to 20. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like me to teach. I'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.